We want to thank the Lord. I, I would like to thank the Lord for another day. Another, I had a good day in his sight today. Um, and uh, I got my sister Kima. She's still staying strong uh, out in the West Coast, you know, watching out for that earthquake out there. <laughs> you know, the hurricane fault line that she's sitting on. Uh, you know, just, she better move up to the hills or get a boat. <laughs> <laughs> but um we on man we on you know thank the lord and she asked a great question she said can we drink so what does the bible have does the bible have answers for questions like that yes it does you know so the bible gives you clarity as to what you can and can't do and even the savior turned water into wine i forgot the verse but it's in the gospel the savior turned water into wine so obviously the Savior drank wine. Okay. So, but now I want to go into the Apocrypha and um, let's see, let the Lord answer her through the Apocrypha. So let's go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, the 31st chapter. Uh, and she's going to start at the 16th verse. Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, the uh the 31st chapter and the 16th verse. Check this out. So she said, can you drink? Let's see how the Bible breaks it down. See, the Bible gives you answers. It's just, do you believe or do you do the answers? Come on. Eat as it becometh a man. Those things which are set before thee and devour not, least thou be hated. Right, so don't be a glutton. You understand? Eat in moderation. Don't be a glutton. That's what he's talking about. So then people start to look at you like, look look at how you act all beastly. Come on. Leave off first for manner's sake, and be not unsatiable, least thou offend. So you're just reaching out. You're just reaching out. You know, you you at the table, you at the dinner table. So he says, leave off for manner's sake. But this is all dealing with science as the Lord breaks this down with, you know, the human digestive system. The Lord is breaking it down based upon the human digestive system. Come on. When thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. See that? So there's a lot of greedy people out there. There's a lot of greedy people out there. So he's telling you how to be a king, how to act like a prince when you're dealing, when you come to a feast. Okay, read on. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetches not his wind short upon his bed. See that? And he fetches not his wind short upon his bed. See that? So that means that you're dealing with flatulence, passing gas, you know, those, those type of things. Because now your body can digest the food properly that you have coming down. But even on a higher level, Spiritually on a high level is talking about the Bible because the Bible is food. You understand? So he's saying, don't go be greedy with the Bible trying to eat too much and then you 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 can't digest it properly. See that? You gotta take things from a low level to a higher level. Come on. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Ah, sound sleep cometh of sound sleep, therefore you don't have what? Nightmares. When you eat late. And you eat a big meal, you get nightmares. A lot of people get nightmares. I used to get nightmares when I was younger because I used to eat late. You understand? And my body you would uh, just react against me. And then when I began to eat at a certain point in time, you know, during the day, I never had those nightmares anymore. That's why he said sound sleep cometh for moderate eating. Come on. He rises early, and his wits are with him. See that? So you can get up early. You can get up, you, you don't feel sluggish because your body still, when you eat late, your body has to digest that food. So now you're making your body work hard. You're making your body work hard. So your wits is with you. you you're, you're not getting up like, oh, sluggish and so forth like that. Come on. But the pain of watching and color and pangs of the belly are with an unstatiable man. See that? So you can't stop reaching. You're just greedy. You're a glutton. That's that's what it's talking about. Come on. And if thou hast been forced to eat, arise, go forth and eat thy fill. 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 Eat thy fill.
Wow. Now, models, when I used to run with the model uh, system, you know, back in the 80s, you know, that's what they used to do. They would go to parties and stuff like that, eat, and then go in the bathroom and stick their hand inside their mouth to vomit it up so that the food wouldn't sit in their stomach because they had to stay way for thin. So look how that right there that they did is still in the Bible. See that? It's still in the Bible, sitting right there. Read on. My son hear me and despise me not. And at the last thou shalt find as I told thee. In all thy works be quick. So shall there no sickness come unto thee. Whoso is liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. But against him that is a niggard of his meat, the whole city shall murmur. And the testimonies of his niggardness shall not be doubted of. See that? So people are going to speak against you when you act in that beastly in that beastly mode. You understand? When you act in that beastly mode. Nah, no, nobody don't want you to come over to their house and so forth like that. You understand? Read on. Show not thy valiantness in wine, for wine have destroyed many. Bang. So she asked the question. She said, what can you drink? Now the Lord is breaking it down. He said, show not there thy what? So that, that, that's what happens with, with people. They get to drinking and they start to lose their mind. All of a sudden they get real tough now. All of a sudden they get real tough. Check it out. The furnace proveth the edge by dipping. So doth wine the heart of the proud by drunkenness. So it's showing you how people get when they start to drink alcohol and all these different things. Come on. Wine is as good as life to a man. If it be drunk moderately, what life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. Bang! Read that piece again. Wine was what? Was made to make men glad. Ah, so he's telling you you can drink wine, but you have to drink it how? Moderately. There you go. Like with anything, there's a positive to it and a negative to it. Come on. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness of the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. But wine drunken with excess maketh bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarreling. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offends. It diminishes strength and maketh wound. Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine and despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despiteful word and press not upon him urging him to drink. So you see how the Apocrypha, which is part of the Bible, is breaking down about food. See how it's breaking down about food. See how it's breaking down about wine. See how it's showing you about being courteous, being respectful. Now watch how it's going to show you how to be a Lord now. Look, check this out. Read on 32nd verse. If thou be made the master of a so now you you put in charge. He, he, somebody put you in charge. Come on. Lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Take diligent care for them, and so sit down. See that? So what it's saying is, now you've been made the master of a feast. Remember, you're just like the people that you're in charge of. So don't think that you're better than them. Don't lift yourself up. He says, take care, do your job, and then go sit down. Come on. And when thou hast done all thy office, take 
take thy place, that thou mayest be merry with them, and receive a crown for thy well ordering of the feast. So do your job. Don't think that you know better. Do your job. That's what he created you for. Whoever put you in charge, do your job. Do your job. Hold on a second. So, you see about wine, right? Yeah. There's more verses, but you got a good set right there about wine. Um, you know, you just got to put together all these different verses and stuff like that. I think there's a, another section that I got about wine somewhere. But wine, you know, is what you should be drinking good wine not too alcoholic you know that and in moderation with your food and you good and you good you know the alcohol and stuff like that that goes into the dealing with your liver and all that so you don't want to be touching that type of stuff you got another question Okay. Well, as 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 much non-alcoholic, where you can tell that they say, well, okay, ten percent alcohol. You understand? What I'm saying, um, you this is what you like. I like sweet wine. I like, you know, white oh, Zinfandels and stuff like that, you know, when I'm chilling with my ladies and stuff like that. You know, uh yeah, I got you. I got you. um you know, I like sweet wine. So okay. uh some people like a dry wine, you know, different type of foods that they cooking. It might bring out the flavor. Um I like white Zinfandel. You know, everybody's got their own things that they like. You understand? Um, okay. you know, me, wine knocks me out. Wine knocks me out. You know, if, <laughs> I mean, if I want to go to sleep, you know, but it's not something like you say, I'm not doing it over and over and over and over and over. I'm not every day yeah. buying a bottle of wine, but if, if I buy a bottle of wine and I drink like maybe a glass, it's going to knock me out and that'll put me to sleep. You know, so you and basically what he's saying is you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself. You understand? You have to know yourself. But you your job is to make the kingdom of heaven. So you can't be a drunkard to try to make the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at that. Let's look at Corinthians. Right. Let's look at Corinthians. Your job is to make the kingdom of heaven. Let's see what Paul says. Okay, it's not in Corinthians. Give me one second. It's going to tell you. All right, let's go this. Let's pick this up. Let's go Galatians 5, verse 19. You're going down to 21. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Right. Galatians, the fifth chapter from the 19th verse down to the 21st verse. Right. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, 
witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness. Bang, what's that? Drunkenness. See that? So that's what we was just yeah. talking about. You understand? So it's not that you can't drink wine, but now if you every day like you drunk, you know, like back in the days in the 70s, you used to have winos and stuff like that. You, you, you understand? So, you know, they, they, they used to drink Cisco and Mad Dog 2020 and Thunderbird and Wild Irish Rose. Huh? <laughs> there you go. You know, there you go. Perfect, perfect example. You understand? So, no, that's not what the Lord is dealing with. You're not going to be coming in, in into the kingdom of heaven like that. Right? So, leave that. Leave that. Read that again. Uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, and start at 19 and go down to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Idolatry. Now uncleanliness, uncleanliness is not talking about a person that's physically dirty, okay? Yeah, you don't want to be physically dirty, but it's not talking about that. See, people misunderstand the Bible. Uncleanliness is when your mind is not clean, right? When, you're, when, when your mind is clogged up. With all types of filth, you know, wrong doctrines and so forth. You unclean. Okay? It's not talking about so you you might be a bum. You 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 might be a person that ain't got no money, but you believe in the Lord. See that? So how can you be unclean? So that's not what he's talking about. So you gotta understand. Come on. Lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Variant. See that? And a lot of people is out there doing a lot of witchcraft. A lot of people is dealing with a lot of false philosophies. That's witchcraft. A lot of people is dealing with millions of people are dealing with religions. That's witchcraft. You understand? Witchcraft doesn't have to come as per se as dealing with spells and all those different type of things. Once you're dealing in false philosophies, you're dealing in witchcraft. You understand? You got to know what witchcraft is. Okay? You have to know what witchcraft is. So when you're dealing with false philosophies, that's countering the Bible. When you're dealing in different religions, that's countering the Bible. You're dealing in witchcraft. Come on. Emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling. See that drunkenness, life. revelings. So these are the different things that you have to be clear of. So see, that's what you got to write down, man. Listen, man, I need to stay away from these things. I need to check myself and make sure that I'm not caught up in these different things. Okay. Uh, let's go over to 1 Timothy, the third chapter. 1 Timothy, the third chapter. First Timothy, the third chapter. First verse? Yeah. This is a true thing. If a man desire the office of a bishop... Now, let's stop right here. First, first we got to understand what is the office of a bishop. Now, Paul was saying this because the nation of Israel had dispersed into many different sections at this time. So now there were new titles coming in. So one of the titles for teaching the people was as a bishop. So you could go and look up these titles and so forth that Israelites were now taking compared to when we were a nation, we were in different tribes. So now they're not talking about tribes anymore. Okay. So now he's giving you a title because now you're dealing with a group of people. So you're a bishop. So you could go and look up the title and see what the title means. Come on. He desireth a good work. 
the bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. So now, vigilant. hold on. This is where Israelites now fall off the horse. They took this one verse right there from the Roman Catholic Church, which the Roman Catholic Church uses to say that a man can only have one wife. It's telling you who should have one wife. Paul is saying, not God, Paul is saying that a man, if you want to be a bishop, meaning teaching the people, you should have one wife. Now, there's a reason why. Because as you have more wives, there's more pulls coming in different directions. Each woman is different. Okay? So now you're being distracted from the work that the Lord has given you. That's why he says he desired a good work. So, yeah, it's a good thing that you should want to teach. But now, if you got a lot of other distractions, and especially dealing with women, you got a problem. That's why he's saying that. So he's saying, look, man, cut down the distractions with the women and just keep one wife if you want to teach the flock. Come on. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So now he's breaking down the nature if a man wants to teach, if he wants to be a bishop, if he wants to be an example, an example above the people, above 10 people, 20 people. So now you become a bishop if you have a group, okay? So you become a leader or an elder. You That's where it's all titles. Everybody understand? Yeah. So now he's giving you the nature that you're supposed to work in. So you got to be apt to teach. You got to be given the hospitality. You must be of good behavior. That means people see you, that you acting a good way. That's why I try to carry myself when I'm out in the streets a good way. You know, whether it be white people, black people. That's why the Lord said, if possible, be at peace with all men. You understand? I say, may the Lord bless you to everybody. White, black, green, blue, Martian. I don't care. I'm not caught up with what man thinks. I teach what the Lord say to teach. And I try to do what the Lord tells me to do. I'm not perfect in it, but that's what I do. Third verse. Not given to wine. Ah, not given to wine. So now be clear. It's not saying that you can't drink wine. Not given to wine is meaning that you've become a wino. See that? Every day you come home, you're hitting the bottle or you're becoming an alcoholic. You know, you're dealing with some kind of drugs. That's why once people start getting like high uh, anti-pain drugs, they become hooked on it. See that? That's the same thing, not giving a wine. So let's say you you get hooked on oxycodone. That's a wine. See that? Because wine does what? It numbs your senses. See that? So since wine numbs your senses, oxycodone does the same thing. So now you need it more and more and more. You need that drug. Wine becomes that drug more and more and more. Come on. No striker. Not right. Green. So no striker meaning that you're hitting your, your wife or your kids and stuff like that. No striker. You're not abusive. Come on. Not greedy, a filthy lucre. Do you know what lucre means? Is that money? There you go. Lucre is money. So you're not greedy for it. It's not that you can't have money. A man of the Lord, there are many men of the Lord throughout the Bible that had millions of dollars in uh, gold and all these different things and stuff like that. But they were built up in the Lord. So when the Lord gave that to them, you know, for ruling kingdoms and stuff like that, they didn't lose their minds like, oh, my God, I got gold and diamonds. See that? Come on. But patience, not a brawler. Not a covetous. Not covetous. Not covetous. Covetous means wanting something that is not yours. So you covet it. That's one of the Ten Commandments where the Lord said, Thou shalt not covet. See that? Thou shalt not covet. Come on. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection, with all gravity. See that? So 
a lot of people don't believe in the Bible. They go to church, but they don't believe in the Bible. See what it says? Read that piece again. One that ruleth his own house. One that ruleth well. One that ruleth well his own house. Read that again. One that ruleth well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. So the man is supposed to rule his house. See what it's telling you? The man is supposed to, that's why this is all about the man. This is a true saying. If a man, it didn't say a woman. So you got women bishops now in these different churches and doctrines and denominations. You have women bishops. It doesn't say anything about a woman there. It doesn't. So it says one that ruled well his own house, meaning that that man, he's supposed to be the father. He's supposed to be the disciplinarian. He's supposed to be everything that ruleth well his own house. Come on. For if a man no, no. Not having, know how to rule, having, having, having his children, having his children in subjection with all gravity. So now you supposed to have your children in subjection. They're not supposed to be running around loose doing whatever they want. See that? They're not supposed to be running around loose doing whatever they want. This is your house. You the man of the house. Now, when they leave and they get their own house and pay their own way, that's them. They become the man of their house, of their nest. So they supposed to be in subject to the man. Fifth verse. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of the Father? See that? So that's an example. If you don't know how to take care of your house, how are you going to be given a higher title to control a higher title. You understand? Of, of, of the Lord's church. See all these are tests for us. All these are tests. And then when the Lord come. He going to put you well. Okay you pass that test. So give him that spot right there. Come on. Not a novice. These being lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. So that's why you have strive for the mastery. You know, it takes time. You don't want to be a novice. Okay, the novice is like a just beginning fighter. You just beginning to fight. You're a novice. Okay? So you can be taken down because as a novice, you have pride. That's why it says not a novice. Why? Less being lifted up with pride. And that's what he's saying novices do. You can fall into the condemnation of the devil. Read on. So the devil is always trying to do what to men? Snare you. There you go. See that, Nestor? Yeah. The devil is always working to try to snare you, man. In some form, some way, the devil is trying to snare you. So that's why you always got to be studying. Because the devil don't care if you fall. He's not like, man, you know... Nesta fellow, I feel so bad. No, he accomplished his job. He took another soul. He took another soul. Okay. All right. Let's hold up there. Uh, I want to start this. This is called False Prophets. So, dictionary terms. Dictionary terms. Right? So, there are many false prophets out here. Many false prophets out here. The Savior spoke about them. The Savior spoke about them. And many people are running around saying that they're prophets of the Lord and so forth like that. So, you have to open your eyes to see that these people are lying. Okay. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. The true prophet is going to speak about false prophets. Matthew 24, verse 11.
Come on. Matthew 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Bang. See that? This is a true prophet. This is son of the Most High. He's the ultimate prophet, and he's giving you a prophecy that in the last days, read that again, and... And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So that's why you got millions of religions with all kind of false prophets. You got people saying that they're prophetesses and they're prophets of the Lord. So let's see, let's get the meaning of what a prophet is. Prophet, a religious seer or interpreter who foretells an event. So a lot of black people go to fortune tellers to read the palm of their hand. But if these people could foresee the future, why is it that they're not millionaires off of Wall Street? Why is it that they're not millionaires off of Wall Street? See the hypocrisy and the stupidity that we involved in? If these people can read, then they, wouldn't they know what is coming down two days from now that they can make millions of dollars? And yet you fall for that? Ask them why are they poor asking for money? That's what a prophet is. Who foretells an event? So if they knew what was coming with the stock crash and all these different things, if they knew that Trump was going to be president, if I knew, well, I did bet on Trump becoming president. I had a hope, you know, based on the way the nature was the country, I made $100. You know what I'm saying? But, um, if people could prophesy that, then they would be multi-millionaires. So then we have, the next word is prophecy. To predict, forewarn, or foretell a future event. Then the next word is prophecy. A prediction of a future event. So you have prophet, prophecy, and prophesy. So when you prophesy, right, you're telling the story. The prophecy is the event that you're talking about. Now in today's time and back then, but back then you had righteous men that were chosen to be prophets of the Lord. See that? You had righteous men and women like Anna the prophetess and Deborah. These were prophetesses. They were chosen by the Lord. But now, for you to be a prophet of the Lord, you have to be chosen by the Lord. So let's stay here, Matthew. Matthew 24. Let's see what Christ is saying again. Let's see Matthew 24, verse 23 and 24. Hello? Yes, I'm here. I'm following. Matthew... and Right, Matthew 24, chapter the 23rd and 24th verse. Let's look and see about false prophets. So everybody out here in any religion, black Christianity, whatever garbage that people are in, and they say that they're a prophet, yes, they can prophesy, but are they a true prophet of the Lord or are they a false prophet of the Lord? We got scriptures. Let the Bible talk. Come on. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. Bang! Why is the Savior saying that? Why is the Savior saying that? So are you reading the Bible that you're believing on what the Savior said because your pastor that's standing in front of you that's telling you that he's a prophet of the Lord is a liar. See, Christ just called them a liar. And what do men do? Men lie. Men are liars. Hold this. All right, let's leave. Read on in Matthew. And shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. See that? So now let's let's see that men are liars. Let's go in the book of Job. Let's go in the book of Job. Let's see that men are liars. Job 13 verse 4. Should be that. Let's go to book Job. 
Job 13, verse 4. Are See, what do men do? Lies. Men are forgers of lies. See that? Religions are forged. Men created. Forge and create is the same thing. So men created these philosophies. Buddhists, Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, Islam, Roman Catholicism, Judaism. Lutheranism, all these, these are for men created that forges to create. So the Lord is saying that you are forges of lies. So you're not a prophet of the Lord. You got women, uh, Anita Bynum, you know, saying that she's a prophet of the Lord, and Creflo Dollar Wife, Taffy Dollar, and all this Tammy, the Tammy Baker, and all of them saying that they prophets. And now I just seen some dude in Chicago talking about him and his. He's made people prophets. You are forgers of lies, man. And black people fall for this garbage. Read that again, verse 13, verse 4, Job 13, verse 4. But ye are forgers of lies. See that? So the Lord is saying that you people, you forge these lies, man. Come on. Ye are all physicians of no value. So you being the leader... You're the physician, and you have no value to you. No value to you at all. Your religion is a lie. You saying you're a prophet, you're a lie. You black women that saying you prophetesses of the Lord, you're a liar. Go to Job 21, verse 34. Job 21, verse 34. See that? So he's saying, how can you comfort me? So somebody want to learn the truth and you don't even know the truth. So you're giving false comfort. How then you comfort me in vain? Why? Being in your answers, there remain a falsehood. So your religions, your doctrines, and you saying that you're a prophet is false. You're a liar. Because this is how you must become a prophet of the Lord. Let's go into the book of Jeremiah. Look, the Lord going to show you. Jeremiah, the first chapter. The Lord going to show you how you become a prophet of the Lord. Jeremiah, the first chapter. The third verse. Read that again, Ben. Read that again. Read that piece again. Come back. Showing you that all these false prophets is out here is a bunch of liars, man. Putting themselves up on posters and stuff talking about come and see prophet this and prophet this that and prophet this Tammy Dollar and whatever garbage. You're a bunch of liars. Because look what the Lord said, man. Read that verse again. the Lord ordained Jeremiah. So you can't just jump up and say, well, now I'm a prophet like these people is doing now. See, Jeremiah is a true prophet of the Lord. That's a heavy hitter. The Lord ordained, the Lord had already predestinated Jeremiah to be a prophet for him. Meaning that he was going to come and give him true visions 
for him to speak as to what the Lord was going to ordain was going to come down in the future. Is there more to that? You want me to go further, but that's the end of the fifth. Okay. Let's jump over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Let's see true prophets. 2 Peter, the first chapter, the 20th and 21st verse. So we got the Savior. The Savior told you that there are going to be many false prophets. And when you're a false prophet, you antichrist. All you false teachers that's out there, you antichrist, man. Teaching lies, the doctrines of men. Come on. No, first, second Peter. The first chapter, the twentieth and twenty-first verse. Second Peter. Got it. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Uh huh. Check this out. Check out how you prophesy. So look at all you false prophets and you people that go to all these religions and suck these people up. A bunch of liars, man. And not only are they liars, you the liar for falling for it. Why? Read 21. For the prophecy came not in old times. So the but whole the Bible, man. the whole Bible is prophecy. And it came not in old time. Go ahead. By the will of man. So man jumps up and says whatever the hell comes out of his mouth. Talk about he a prophet. Man does that. So the Lord is cutting all of that right now. The Lord is cutting all of that and he's showing you. It didn't come by how you think, well, okay, today I want to be a prophet. Okay, I'm going to be a prophet. But how did the prophecy, which is the new, which is the Bible, how did the Bible and all the prophets that wrote the different parts of the Bible come into existence? but by holy men of the Lord who spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit ain't on you like it's on Paul, like it's on Jude, like it's on James, like it's on John the Revelator, like how it's on Matthew, Mark, Luke, you understand? John, if it's not on you, and the Holy Spirit is not coming to you anymore because the Bible is already done. So there is no more true Israelite prophets anymore. Because the prophecies is already complete. Everything is here. Everything is here. Three books, the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Everything that is needed of true prophecy by the true prophets of the Bible is written there. So ain't nobody out here. The only person that's falling for that is you. Because you like lies. You like the lies of Satan. You doubt the Bible. So you fall for all these dudes that's talking about the Bible is false. And this and that. And there is no Christ. And Christ is white and all this. And the New Testament is written by the Greeks and all this madness. You the one, you false prophet, you antichrist. So there it is. You got some verses. And then this page is pretty long, so I'll cover that again tomorrow. I'll pick it up tomorrow deeper about what is false prophet. And there's thousands of them out here, especially in the black church community. Thousands of these cats running up talking about their prophet, prophet this and prophet that. Well, how come you broke, dude? How come you broke? You a prophet. How come you broke? You don't see where you're going to get money at? It's amazing with these dudes. So with that, running out of time, I say peace. Thank the Lord and thank you for everything. Peace.